Good morning. At this point in the curriculum, we have covered the capabilities of the DRT, the duties and responsibilities of reconnaissance team members, formations and order of movement, and halts. Today, we will build on this base by discussing actions on contact at the team level, specifically two battle drills, Battle Drill 1, React to Direct Fire Contact, and Battle Drill 3, Break Contact. As always, infantry platoon and squad battle drills can be found in ATP 3-21.8 Appendix J. There are eight forms of contact. The easiest way to remember them is the acronym Dino Cave. Direct contact is contact when the unit is receiving fire from a direct fire weapon system, for example, a rifle or a machine gun. Indirect contact is when the unit is receiving fire from an indirect weapon system. Think mortars and artillery. Non-hostile contact is when the unit is in contact with a non-hostile element, for example, civilians. This is often wrongly called a soft compromise. Do not use the term soft compromise. Report the form of contact and the specifics in salute format with a recommendation for how to proceed. Obstacle contact is visual contact with an enemy obstacle. As obstacles are always overwatched by an enemy, you can assume that if you approach the obstacle, the enemy will observe you. CBRN contact is chemical, biological, radiological, or nuclear contact. Put on your pro mask and report. Aerial contact is visual or direct contact with enemy air assets, such as a helicopter. Visual contact is contact with either an optic or your eyes uh, of an enemy element. And finally, electronic contact is contact with the enemy via an electronic means, for example, jamming or another Russian or Chinese social media spy or app, such as FaceApp or TikTok. I digress. For the average soldier, electronic contact refers to jamming. However, for our operations, actions on contact will be briefed by phase during the operations order. This presentation addresses actions on direct contact, which will always be the same unless specified otherwise in the order. There are three primary situations in which direct fire contact can occur. First, while the team is moving. Second, while the team is halted. And third, while the team is split with separate moving stationary elements. In these situations, there are a limited number of formations that the team will be utilizing. If moving, the team will either be in a file or in team column. If halted, the team will either be in a deliberate security halt or in a zipper halt. If the team is split with multiple stationary or moving elements, then the team leader will brief the specific reaction he expects from his elements during his five-point contingency plan, also called the GATWA. Thus, there are a limited number of team dispositions in which we can rehearse a react contact drill. These situations are when moving in a file or halted in a zipper, while moving in team column, or while halted in a security halt. In this case, reacting to contact from the security halt has several options available to the team leader who will direct the appropriate drill, most likely battle drill three, but slightly different given the disposition of the team. This is situation dependent and will not be addressed here we will focus on the first two situations. In a standard infantry squad, the sequence of events is standard. The unit receives fire and conducts their immediate actions. Individual soldiers return fire, seek cover, and return accurate fire. The unit then automatically begins battle drill one, react to contact, to generate options for the squad leader. The squad leader then assesses the situation and decides whether the unit will conduct a squad attack, battle drill two alpha, or break contact, battle drill three. This is based on the squad's mission and the mission of the line infantry squad, which is to close with and destroy the enemy through fire and maneuver. To support this mission, infantry squads are equipped with more firepower and more personnel than a reconnaissance team. The mission of the reconnaissance team is different. Our mission is to conduct reconnaissance and security operations to answer the commander's information requirements and to provide early warning to the protected force. In essence, your mission is to enable the line infantry to locate their objective and assault it effectively. Think of it like Star Wars and we're the Bothans. A reflection of our different mission set is that instead of being configured for fire and maneuver, we are configured for stealth and speed. As a result, our reaction to direct fire contact is different. Due to our reduced size, if we take a casualty, our ability to complete the mission is severely reduced and the primary concern of the team will shift to Kazabak instead of intelligence gathering. Thus, the team leader must immediately react to incoming enemy fire with a quick assessment of the battlefield and his team's capabilities. We travel as an eight-man team with a single belt-fed weapon carried by the saw gunner. As a result, the largest element that we can effectively engage is a two-man team. This is a reflection of the Army's three-to-one ratio for offensive maneuvers. 
As a result, if the team leader assesses that there are more than two enemy troops or a single belt-fed weapon, then he knows that it is more important to break contact from the area than to fight it out. The reconnaissance team is unique in that we are configured to break contact from a file, utilizing either an Australian peel, also called an Aussie peel, or a center peel. Reconnaissance teams can also conduct a deliberate react to contact battle drill 1 if the team leader decides to develop the situation and get more information, or if he assesses that there are only one or two enemy soldiers and he assesses a lower risk of compromise and mission failure by killing them rather than by breaking contact. This brings us to our first board of the day, Battle Drill 1, React to Contact. It has been modified from its original version to better fit the dismounted reconnaissance team. The end state of Battle Drill 1, React to Contact, is to generate options for the team leader. The battle drill takes the team from operating as a single element to operating as two maneuver elements, one led by the team leader or senior scout observer, and one led by the assistant team leader. As briefed earlier, Immediately upon receiving direct fire, all members of the team return fire, seek cover, and then return accurate fire. As soon as the enemy is identified, the team calls direction, distance, and description. The team echoes the three Ds so that the entire team is tracking. It is critical to call the direction relative to the team's 12 o'clock, not your individual 12 o'clock. See this example. If you are the first scout observer in the zipper halt here and take contact from two enemies to the 12 o'clock of your sector, you would return fire, seek cover, and return accurate fire. Then, seeing that the enemy is to the 9 o'clock of the formation, yell 9 o'clock, 100 meters, two enemies. This orients the entire team to the threat. Once the three Ds have been called, the team leader makes his decision on what to do next. If he decides to conduct a react contact, he will instruct the unit to get online. If the team is in a file, the front four members become a fire team, led by either the SSO or the TL. If the TL wants the SSO to lead the fire team, he directs the SSO to do so by saying, your fire team, and the SSO's name. The rear four members also become a fire team, led by the ATL. The element closest to contact becomes the base of fire and immediately begins suppression of the enemy. The fire team leader issues fire commands to the saw gunner to control his fire. With the enemy suppressed, the team leader can direct the other team, known as the maneuver element, or maneuver fire team, to get online with the other team and engage the enemy. The end state of the react to contact from a file is the entire team online, oriented on the threat, delivering effective direct fire, and operating as two distinct maneuver elements. If the team is in team column, a similar process is used. However, in team column, the two elements are already separated as two maneuver elements, allowing faster employment by the team leader. The team's initial response to direct fire is the same, return fire, seek cover, return accurate fire. The team then directs which element is the base of fire, usually by saying, you are the base of fire, and then maneuvers the other team online. Fire team leaders continue to issue fire commands to control their team's fires. The end state of react contact from team column is the same as file, the entire team online, oriented on the threat, delivering effective direct fire and operating as two distinct maneuver elements. Once the team has reached this point, the team leader can decide whether to pursue a squad attack, battle drill 2 alpha, or break contact battle drill 3. To make this decision, he considers the situation, the disengagement criteria, tempo, and mission statement. He then chooses a course of action to pursue and the team executes. If the team chooses to break contact, there are several options, bringing us to the second board in the presentation. The end state of a break contact is to avoid becoming decisively engaged by moving the friendly element out of contact without casualties. This is achieved by delivering overwhelming fire to suppress the enemy while maneuvering out of contact. Smoke and indirect fire can aid the team. There are three methods that we'll use in C Troop. The first two methods, Aussie Peel and Center Peel, are used for when the team is traveling in file. The third method, Battle Drill 3, is used when the team has conducted a react to contact but realizes that the threat exceeds their disengagement criteria and that they need to break contact to avoid becoming decisively engaged and destroyed. As we have just briefed React Contact, we'll begin with the third option, Battle Drill 3. Battle Drill 3 is simple. It begins with the element online. The team leader orders a break contact by saying, break contact, 4 o'clock, or whatever direction that he selects for the team to break contact. In order to deliver maximum firepower on the enemy, while breaking contact, the team leader directs which element will be the base of fire first and which will be the maneuver element. 
the base of fire element remains in place and continues to deliver well-aimed, sustained fire on the enemy. The maneuver element splits into buddy team pairs. The first buddy team bounds, while the second buddy team maintains suppressive fire on the enemy. The result is that there are no fewer than six guns firing at any given moment. Once they announce to their fire team leader that they are set, the second buddy team within the maneuver fire team bounds back. Once they are set, the entire fire team is prepared to support the other fire team's withdrawal. The roles of base of fire and maneuver now switch. The fire team that just completed its bound becomes the base of fire element. The other fire team becomes the maneuver element. This pattern continues in the direction that the team leader specifies until the element is out of contact. While bounding, it is usually advisable to have the outside teams bound before the inside teams. In this way, there is a reduced risk of a buddy team trying to provide suppressive fire between another buddy team and the other fire team. In this illustration, this means that the soldiers labeled 1 bound first, followed by the 2s, which completes the first fire team's bound. When the second fire team bounds, the 3s move first, then the 4s. However, this is at the team leader's discretion and is met TC dependent. The center peel is used for when the team is in file and the team leader can immediately identify that the enemy is beyond disengagement criteria, for example, a crew served weapon or a three-man fire team. It is most suitable for restricted terrain and allows the unit to break contact to the 6 o'clock. It requires extreme caution, however, as the soldier breaking contact is running between two other soldiers providing suppressive fire. The center peel begins when the unit receives direct fire and the team leader orders a break contact with the team's pro word to use a center peel. A pro word is a simple word that signals an action. In this, board, in this board's example, the pro word is bang, and it indicates that the team will conduct a center peel to the 6 o'clock. Pro words should never be synonyms or close to other commands. For example, the pro word to break contact should be unrelated from the break contact. Bang, acorns, rooster, etc. are all examples of unique words that will not be mistaken for other commands. On the command to conduct a center peel, soldiers form a staggered column. It is critical for the soldiers in the column to be aware at all times of where their team members are as they will be firing towards the enemy past the retreating teammate. Once the team is in staggered column, the first two soldiers begin firing. The team leader instructs the first man, usually the SSO, to begin his peel, and as soon as the man passes him, the team leader assumes that man's sector of fire. As the first man passes the second man in the staggered column, the second man prepares to bound. Depending on the team leader's decision for his team's SOP, the first man passing the second can either signal the second man to immediately follow, or to maintain his position and wait for the team leader's command, or to fire three more shots before bounding, or another option that the team leader decides. All of these options balance suppression versus speed differently. As each soldier breaks contact, the soldier behind him assumes his sector and continues to suppress the enemy. If done violently and quickly, the enemy will be, will be unable to pursue the team quickly. The team continues the center peel until out of contact. The Australian peel, or Aussie peel, is used for when the element is in reduced composition and the team leader can immediately identify that the enemy is beyond disengagement criteria. While it can be used in a full eight-man configuration, it will be a much slower break contact than using Battle Drill 3. However, for smaller elements, such as six-man or smaller elements, it allows maximum firepower against the enemy without the hindrance to the speed of the break contact. The Aussie peel begins at the team leader's command and in the direction he orders. In this case, he uses the pro word monster and directs the break contact to the four o'clock. The team leader moves first, non-linearly, meaning not in a straight line, but in a sort of abbreviated cloverleaf, to an open sight line. He sets in place and continues to fire, directing the next soldier to move. Each subsequent soldier follows suit, moving non-linearly to an open sight line until the enemy is out of contact. Excuse me, until the element is out of contact. In this presentation, we have addressed the eight forms of contact, the situations that a reconnaissance team can encounter direct fire contact, the sequence of actions on contact, and why a reconnaissance team reacts differently from a line infantry squad, how to react to contact from a file or zipper halt, how to react to contact from team column, how to break contact after conducting battle drill one, react to contact, by conducting battle drill three, break contact, how to break contact to the six o'clock while in file using a center peel, 
and how to break contact in any direction when operating in a reduced configuration using an Australian or Aussie peel. The following resources were used in preparing this presentation. Send any questions or comments to charlietrooptactics at outlook.com.